Okay. But like we're trying to uh, analyze Reddit dialogue, uh, Reddit discourse. Oh my gosh. In, in, with the two faculty in the College of Ed. Um, I've been doing research under them for like 18 months now. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's so interesting to hear them geek out with educational terms. Like, mm -hmm. for example, deliberate dialogue or like deliberate discourse. And there's like a whole field of uh, research being published um, in the, with those key terms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah, when you said that you were analyzing dialogue on Reddit, I was like, that sounds like a lot. Because, you know, like people have a lot to say on Reddit. <laughs> More than people have to say in classes. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, and sometimes it's not just like, you know, the, the volume of what they have to say, but it's just like the volume of responses and then all the extraneous things that kind of don't relate to the original question being asked or like, like the discussion just kind of like go in this like weird direction. Um, but it, I'm sure it's super interesting for you to, to do that kind of research and analysis. Mm -hmm. It definitely makes me uh, appreciate deep work because you really have to focus into like really finding um, what comedians would say, like finding funny in something that's not funny at all, right? But mm -hmm. in, in our case, like being able to distinguish outrage versus evidence versus, um, what is it, another one? I haven't coded any of the dialogue anytime recently, so it's not fresh in my mind, but there's literally like 20 different categories in which we mm -hmm. chunk and bucket these uh, responses and yeah. posts into. Um, and then we do uh, further analysis, like grounded theory analysis, um, axial coding, right? Like we find commonalities and we use software. It's, yeah, it's a whole, mm -hmm. whole ordeal. Yes. <laughs> yeah, as you said, there's a whole field of research out there just on coding, for instance, or just like a particular kind of coding or methodology for coding. Um, yeah, which is, it's interesting, but all, I mean, like, I'm, like, I, I know how to do that work, but, um, you know, as people go through grad school and as they do research, they kind of develop their, their own ways of, of doing things. So, yeah, I've, I have a lot of respect for people who have the patience to do that kind of work. Um, but, you know, I, uh, I'll be honest, for me, it's, it's kind of like doing that kind of work of coding is, it feels really dehumanizing um, in a lot of ways, especially at some point where, you know, you're literally just reading transcripts of what people have written or what people have said or like what someone said to someone else that has now been transcribed and now it's just the words on the page. Um, so that's also really interesting to think about, you know, like how the, the original context in which these dialogues happened sort of shifts once it gets onto the paper or the computer screen that, that you're spending hours pouring over. I totally agree. And I've been able to come to terms with the fact that it is somewhat dehumanizing um, mm -hmm. by realizing you know, both of the faculty that I work with are, are also in teaching positions and through the research that they're doing, um, kind of sort of allows them to be in teaching positions because they kind of, you know, have to, I don't know, quote unquote, meet the status quo mm -hmm. um, of what's expected in, in that college yeah. uh, to be able to uh, teach. <laughs> yeah. 